YouTube, what's the deal? Come on in. Welcome to Mo's Notes. I'm your host, Mo's. Today, we continue in our series called The Checkup, where we check up, check in with all 32 teams in the NFL before the start of the 2021 NFL season. Today, we're on the Kansas City Chiefs. Listen, I don't want to spend too much time on this video because I don't like the Chiefs. Yeah, you can still say I'm bitter. Yeah, you can say I need to let it go. Uh, we shouldn't have lost that, that Super Bowl against them. We had it in the bag. Uh, I'm not even going to go into the details why, because I could be here all day. Like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this video. You can tell the Chiefs fans I said so. We tell my cousin Terrence, who's a Chiefs fan, I said so. I don't care. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this video. I don't like the Chiefs. I don't like none of them. All right, that may not be true. But for this video, and for any time we play them, I don't like them. And you could tell Terrence I said it. I'll, listen, I'll tell Terrence I said it. I'ma tell, I'm gonna I'm text Terrence, I don't like your team. And go watch my video that's up called the checkup with the Kansas City Chiefs, where I'll say vigorously that I don't like your team. Let's go to some of the key losses for this team. Left tackle Eric Fisher, right tackle Mitchell Swartz. This one surprised me. Um, your two starting tackles, who are really good tackles, you let go. I know they weren't available to you in the Super Bowl. I know you had injury concerns, but to let go two really, really good tackles like that was surprising, but maybe they had a plan. We'll see. Uh, wide receiver Sammy Watkins, running back Damian Williams, Fullback Anthony Sherman, who retired, and running back Le'Veon Bell, who had some not so pleasant things to say about Andy Reid. Don't think Andy Reid cares. <laughs> I really don't think he cares. Uh, moving over to some additions. Biggest addition is right tackle Orlando Brown. I have him listed as right tackle because that's what he was at Baltimore, but he's a left tackle now. That was the reason why he requested the trade out of Baltimore because he knew with Ronnie Stanley in the building that he was never going to play left tackle. But he felt like he had the ability and that he is ready to move over to the premier position on the offensive line, which is left tackle. Obviously, left tackles get paid a little bit more, uh, but left tackles also have a bigger responsibility by protecting the quarterback's blind side. So it's understandable why he would want to move to that position. I do think it's, it's based off finances and what he could potentially make in his career. But I also think Orlando Brown Jr. wants that challenge to say, I am one of the best offensive linemen in the league and I can prove it by moving from the right side to the left side and protecting the best quarterback in the NFL. Watch me do it. So I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for anybody who has that mentality of, I am this good and let me show you I'm this good. I wanna see it and I wanna see him succeed. They also add left guard Joe Tooney, defensive tackle Jerron Reed, fullback Michael Burton, cornerback Mike Hughes, and linebacker Nick Bolton. I added Nick Bolton for this reason. Like some of y'all Chiefs fans that was in my comments when I was doing uh, my mock draft videos got to eat crow. Because when I said that the linebacking quarter was the weakest position group on his team, Y'all tried to laugh me out the building. There's no way we're going Nick Bolton with our first pick. Yes, she did. And even though it was only in the second round, I feel like if they didn't trade their first round pick for Orlando Brown Jr., they would have taken Nick Bolton. They need to upgrade the linebacker for on the defense. They fell in love with Nick Bolton during the draft process. And thankfully, he was able to fall to them in the second round. But I knew y'all needed that. And you can look at the, the you can look at the the depth chart, and look, see who y'all had at linebackers, and say, yeah, we might need to upgrade that position. And y'all addressed it with Nick Bolton, and I called it. I mocked Nick Bolton to the Chiefs. So, you know, not to brag or nothing, but you know, just give me my props. Give me my flowers while I can smell them. Come on now, listen. When y'all was right, y'all was right. I'll let y'all know. I'll go in the comments, but yo, you was right, bro. You was right. So just, just, just give, I give y'all y'all flowers. Give me my flowers. Give me my flowers. 
So, I mean, if you look at who they lost and you look at who they added, I think the Chiefs have a healthy balance. Healthy balance of who they added and where they're going to contribute. So let's take a look at uh, starting lineup. Offensive line is the biggest change here because everybody who started on this offensive line was not on this team last year except for Lucas Nyang. Lucas Nyang was on this team and he opted out because of COVID in 2020. So the Chiefs are technically considering him a rookie. Um, so we got Lucas Nyang at right tackle. Now, this is one of the ones I had to eat crawling because Chiefs fans are telling me, yo, don't sleep on Lucas Nyang. Don't sleep on Lucas Nyang. When he comes back, he's going to take over that right tackle position, which is making more sense now with why the Chiefs were like, yeah, we're going to let Mitchell Schwartz go. One, he making too much money. And two, he got this back issue. Oh, yeah, we got Lucas in the tub. We good. Um, Orlando Brown Jr., as we talked about, coming over to play left tackle. Joe Tooney coming over from the Patriots to play left guard. Rookie from Oklahoma, Creed Humphrey sliding in at center. I think that's a great pick. And this one I'm really happy about. Right guard, Trey Smith. I believe the Chiefs drafted him in the sixth round. And everybody was saying it's a steal. For the most part, it was it was big news. And I think it was trending on Twitter where everybody was like, yo, why are y'all disrespecting Trey Smith like this? Trey Smith, they were saying he should have went in the second or third round. But the second round goes by. Third round. Fourth round. And everybody was like, yo, why are y'all disrespecting Trey Smith like this? Like, this is a travesty. Whatever team gets him is getting a baller. Word in camp is Trey Smith has been the best offensive lineman for this team. Obviously, he had injury concerns. The, the medical check didn't go so well. He had an issue with blood clots. So I can understand to a degree. But Trey has come in and has been the best offensive lineman on this team in camp. I think this is why I don't want to talk about it, because if Lucas Nyang is as good as the Chiefs fans saying he is, we know Joe Tooney is a gamer coming over from the Patriots. We know Orlando Brown Jr. is good, although he's switching over to left tackle. We still think he's going to be really, really good. We know Creed Humphrey is a beast. And Trey Smith, as your best offensive lineman, like if this offensive line can be really, really good and maybe on paper, because technically Creed Smith, Trey, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith and Lucas Nyang are rookies and it'd be their first year starting in the NFL. So maybe on paper, they're not top five, but if they can produce like a top five offensive line, like why is this team still good? Whatever. Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback. We know that. Um, Anthony Sherman was a fixture in this offense from the fullback position. Uh, so that's why I have a fullback here instead of a slot wide receiver. And, you know, Anthony Sherman retired. So now it's Michael Burton. So you figure to see him in kind of a similar role as Anthony Sherman. Clyde Edwards Alaire at running back. We already know who our weapons are. Tyreek Hill, one of the best wide receivers in the league. Travis Kelsey, the second best tight end in the league. I said second because there's only one number one, and that's the people's tight end, George Kittle. Yes, I'm biased. So what? And then on the outside at the other wide receiver position, we have Miko Hartman. Now, Miko Hartman got to prove that he can man that position. They spent a high draft pick on him, I believe second round pick. Um, he has the speed. You know he's fast, but he's been inconsistent, particularly with catching the ball. He drops passes that he should catch. So Miko Hartman has to prove that he can be a reliable number three target for Patrick Mahomes in this offense. I believe he can do it, but he has to prove it on the field. But if this is your offense, you're winning a lot of games, unfortunately. I hate these Chiefs. Defense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Chris Jones, Frank Clark, defensive ends, Jerron Reed coming over from the Seahawks, and Derek Nandi as your defensive tackles. Your linebacking core got a little bit more athletic. You got Anthony Hitchens, who's the veteran, but you got Willie Gay and Nick Bolton as your outside linebackers. Another reason why I'm upset, because I feel like this team got better. With Willie Gay and Nick Bolton as, as, as your linebackers now, now your linebackers are athletic. Now your safeties can be more safeties than they are linebackers. Instead of seeing, you'll still see Tyron Matthew in the box a lot just because of how dynamic he is and what he can do. But I having him play more of his snaps deep um, and man in the, that back end, I think is going to be crucial for the defense as well. Uh, you got Daniel Sorensen at free safety. Yes, he's the veteran. Uh, he's okay in this system. Me personally, I would start Juan Thornhill at that position. Or if you move Tyron to free safety and Thornhill to strong safety, my safety combination would be Matthew and, Thorn and Thornhill instead of Sorensen. Uh, but um, I think Thornhill is coming off injury. So Sorensen is likely to get to start. And then on the outside, we got your various Ward and Legeria Sneed. Maybe not household names, but these are two really good corners. Um, and with this front, if Reed can get pressure up the middle, Jones and Clark can get pressure on the outside, and Bolton and Gay can lock down tight ends coming across the middle in the intermediate areas or running backs leaking out uh, in the backfield, um, these corners are going to have, you know, room to make plays. Um, and they won't have to be in coverage for too long. I'm not talking about this team anymore. I could care less. I know they're going to be successful. I know they're going to win a lot of games. Don't want them to, but that's just the reality of what's happening. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm sorry, not too much enthusiasm because I don't like the Chiefs. You can tell my cousin Terrence I said it. I'll tell him I said it, but you tell him too. Everybody needs to tell him that we don't like the Chiefs. If you enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up. I know a lot of you Chiefs fans are probably gonna hit the thumbs down because I'm telling you I don't like your team, but hit the thumbs up because you know it's a good video. I did say some positive things about your team. So don't be petty. Hit the thumbs up, Chiefs fans. Everybody else hit the thumbs up because it was a really good video. Um, <laughs> if you wanna connect with me on social media, um, I'll drop those uh, links in the description. Feel free to connect with me on whatever your preferred method is. Um, if you're a Chiefs fan and you want to talk about this lineup, if you want to make changes, if you think they should do something different, uh, if you like Sorensen starting over Thornhill, let me know. Drop a comment below. Love interacting with you guys. Uh, you're here. I appreciate your time and attention. I need you to do two more favors before you bounce out. I need you to hit that subscribe button. Take another two seconds, hit that bell icon so that you get notified every time new content drops right here at Mo's Nose. As always, love and appreciate you. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Y'all be easy.